Okay, so this is the Hioki IR4058 insulation tester. You can see uh, alongside the mega unit here, uh, quite a, a different kind of footprint and way of working against the more common insulation testers you see out on the market, uh, such as this mega unit here. So the one thing that you do get with this style of test is that everything, all your probes and your leads are contained within this upper compartment, um, which keeps everything all nice and compact and tucked away together. Uh, the only downside to that is there isn't much more room for adding in extra clips or the remote lead that does come with this. And I pull these all out, see that in actual fact comes with the two leads, red, yellow and black. I get a red and a black probe and I just get the one black crocodile clip. So if you are doing timed insulation tests you need to supplement the kit with another crocodile clip. And this clip is actually the same clip physically that comes with the Keysight units and just branded Hioki instead. Okay so once you've flipped the lid back and it does slide all the way underneath the unit and when it's in this fully slid back position you can lift up the front end and create a small little angle of the actual meter itself. It's it's not the same kind of angle that you would get with these uh, other insulation testers. So I end up usually propping it up with something just to give a bit better angle uh, but we'll reposition the camera to actually go onto the screen itself a little bit. Okay, reposition now. I'm propped up. You can see on this particular tester, we've got a 200 milliamp continuity range, and then a voltage range, and then the insulation test function in 5125 to 5500 and 1000 volts. So that's all this tester does. Along the bottom here, we've got an on off button for the light, zero ohms adjust, comparison function and in build to the comparison function there is also the Bluetooth connection and then at the end we've got a release button for 500 volt 1000 volt tests which is fairly unique to this tester and the tester is turned on and off by this uh, button up here at the top which you can press in momentarily and hold in or you can flick it up to bring the tester on all the time until you it back off again. Okay for an ohms test I've got the motor simulator stuck at the back here behind the tester so we can flick him to ohms. Uh, it does actually have zero adjustment on so we'll turn him off. I'll flick him on and you press once for the zero ohms adjust and then it's set up and then if I go to actual winding, press the button. So that's probably my connection set all yeah. the yeah, red one's a bit loose, so try them again. There we go. That's a bit steadier. I can do it that way and take the recording, or I can flick him on and leave him switched on. Move over to one of the other connections. Oh, now you see there. So in the ohms adjust, the comparison function does work in the ohms adjust as well. Press him once and then bring him to one of the values. Either of these buttons will work for the value. So through off, I can actually take it the other way. So 200 ohms. So I set him to one ohm. And do the test again. You can see the screen lights up bright red. If it fails, and you've got a little fail icon in there. If I just set the comparison again, go the other way, and this time you get a pass. So that's the comparison function working, and that's all you can do in the ohms. Volts is obviously AC-DC volts 
it will automatically change depending on what you what it picks up onto it. It's off the same connections and move around onto insulation test. Again, you can use the comparison function and the value of the comparison function will change dependent upon what range you've got. So with this one, I can go to 50 mega ohms on the 250 volt range. If I go to the 500 volt, so let's go back 125, turn it on for that. You can only go up to 20 mega ohms max and it changes for whichever range you are on. So what we did just see briefly there is at the 500 volt range and on the 1000 volt range, you've got this release button here. We can't test until you fit that release button. So you hit the release button and then you can test. Okay, so it's set up for an insulation test. Again, I can do comparison function. Uh, for my volt and if we go to one leg ohm and press the test button you can see it passes for 1.6 mega ohms just change that and it's now flashing away to say that there's a voltage present again because my winding simulator is a bit more capacitive it holds a charge for quite a bit longer if I go to another range now it will actually alarm to say there is a voltage present. Go around to there, you can see there is 23 volts present. Turn it on, you can see there's 15 volts there. It does actually alarm to say that the voltage is present. I can't remember which one this one does. It. Okay, so it's about 12, 13 volts after that. You don't get the alarm to say there is a voltage present and you can continue on the test. However, this doesn't appear to lock out. So if you have a voltage present, if I fall it again, so it's alarming now because the 1.88 is below 50 mega ohms comparison value. And if I go back down to voltage, you see there's 17 volts there. Back up to 250, it knows the voltage is there, but when I press the test button, it appears to still apply the test voltage and carry the actual test out so it alarms to say there's voltage but doesn't actually lock out the insulation function okay so the unit has a 500 milliamp fuse as one of the protection to the inputs um, it's stored inside the battery compartment it would normally sit inside there I've removed it to see what happens when we actually carry out some tests to see if there is a blown fuse indication and what the fuse actually protects. Okay, so we're set up for an insulation test. Go to 250 volts, put them on there, and you can see it appears to be working. We've got an insulation test reading on there, so that's fine. Uh, we'll pop it back onto volts and we can see that the voltage is actually reading take away yeah so the voltage function is also working we'll flick him round to ohms and that was the voltage detection there working I believe so and there you see she comes up with fuse flashing away so it knows that the fuse is actually blown but it only picks it up on the continuity function all the other functions seem to work okay as does uh, voltage detection on the continuity function as well so it's alarming at the moment to say there's a voltage present so even though the fuse is blown it's still picking that up yeah that's quite neat that is pretty much the IR4058 in a nutshell. Um, a very simple insulation tester. It does have connection to Bluetooth, but that's just to pick up individual results. There is no logging function with that. Um, so I haven't bothered to produce a, a video on that. It's not really worth anything to my mind, the Bluetooth. Um, 